I'm really excited about this one. <laughs> um, okay, if you're not a, a Mac fanboy like me, then you can just like yeah, stop watching the video. But this channel is not always exclusively about motorcycles. It's about uh, every, it's about it's about me. So I get the opportunity to to make a video like this. Look at that mirror finish. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Uh, so what you're seeing here, <laughs> speaking of this finish, it's a mirrored drive door. You're like, yeah, I, I know, I can see that. No, 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 the, the Mac is called <laughs> mirrored drive door. <laughs> All right, so here's a story. I, I love I love old Macs. Um, especially, it's almost like when you get to buy that car that was super expensive. Like, like you'll go and you'll buy, you'll irrationally spend 10 grand on a V12, uh, you know, Bentley from, or a 16 cylinder Bentley from like the nineties, because you know, it was like 200 grand when you were a kid. And then you're like, well, now this thing's $10,000. I'm going to buy it. Even though it's a total money pit. It's like, it feels like you finally got that car. I'm that way with old Max. I've irrationally purchased a lot of Max that were exciting to me when I was younger and are these days less exciting. So, uh, in, in this came out in 2000, 2000, January of 2003, this is a Power Mac G4 from Apple Computer, back when they were called Apple Computer. Um, this was the very last design of the uh, Macintosh G4 tower before it was replaced with the G5 six months later. So um, this is how all the Macs used to look back in the day from the uh, Bondi Blue Pismo G3s all the way up to, uh, well, this. And then the G5 came out and it was an aluminum tower. Uh, it was replaced by the Mac Pro, which was an Intel tower, it looked just like the G5, and um, and the rest is history. So, um, what's special about this? Well, I should back up. I didn't pay for this, and I actually I haven't seen one of these on eBay in a really long time. Um, in, in any sort of affordable quality, in a working quality, um, I was literally walking past a trash can, and I saw this in the trash. Now this, this computer came on in January of 03. So it's like old, it's super old. It is, you know, I was, uh, <laughs> I was a junior in high school when this came out, but every month I would get Mac mall magazine and I would flip through all the pages and I would lust after the G4 cube and the titanium PowerBook G4 and the power Mac G4. And but then the G5 came around, I got to the point where I was making enough money at my technology job to start buying these things as they were current. But the machines that were all like pre-2006 were all these machines that for the last 15 years before 06, I had like lusted after. And this is one of those last machines that was like, you know, configurable up to three grand or four grand. And I just didn't have the money to buy it. And so um, it's crazy to finally have one, even though if you look at the benchmarks compared to like my iMac and my MacBook Pro, it's ridiculous. Like my iMac has like an 18,000 um, Geekbench score and this thing is like 800. Um, that doesn't really matter though. What matters is I have it. <laughs> so I was walking past a trash can and I saw this thing and I'm like, there's no way this works. So I grabbed it, saved it. And this is literally how it looks, by the way. All I did was apply some Windex. This is how it looks. There's a little bit of paint right there. There's some scratching on the case. Remember, this thing has been used by someone since 2003. And, um, and so I grabbed it, I took it home. Uh, I purchased a $6 DVI to HDMI cable for it because these machines are equipped with only a DVI, a full-size DVI, and an Apple display connector or ADC. So it only has those two ports in the back of it. So uh, rather than spending a lot of money, I just basically got a DVI to mini DVI connector hooked up to a computer grabbed a random power cable and just said if this boots up great if it doesn't i'll put it back where i found it basically because <laughs> i don't want to invest the money because they're there you know if the power supply is dead the money it takes to like wire up what money and time to wire up a normal agp power supply is a lot of work um so there's that if the disk drive is dead if the hard drives are dead you know any amount of money I have to spend on this thing to get it going, I want to spend in improvements, not in getting it back to life. So, um, and don't worry, I've already spent money on this <laughs> because that's just how I am. But, um, and, I, and I've also never had a computer that has an ADC port, Apple Display Connector, which is a variation of DVI. Uh, it's proprietary, I only worked with a few different monitors, but I've always wanted to have an Apple 
um, studio display and so I need ADC for that so um, I grabbed one of those as well but anyway what made this so special is that what happened was Apple released in January of 2003 what we know is the last and most fastest Power Mac G4 ever. It's not dual core, it's literally two CPUs clocked at 1.42 gigahertz each. Single core, but two chips, right? Um, and it also had the inclusion of Firewire 800 or Firewire B, and then they also did something else uh, as well. And then in June of that year, they le released the Power Mac G5. And so they kept this one around, but in a, a handicapped sort of way, they, they, they killed this. So in January, they did the dual core 1.42s and they added Firewire B. And then in June, they basically re-released this for cheaper without Firewire B. And there's one of the things different about it. Maybe it's a single core. Basically because it was the last computer that could run Mac OS 9. So if you were hold out for Mac OS 9, this was the very last photo computer you could buy uh, that could run OS 9. And so they, they put that out there, and then the Power Mac G5 got FireWire B, and the rest is history in that way. So this machine, you had to have purchased one between January and June 2003 to get that spec with FireWire B. And also, by the way, these are USB 2 ports, but for some reason they're not activated. They only run at USB 1.1 speeds. So the way this opens up is, and it is really heavy, it's acrylic handles, acrylic basically all around. Uh, the front has one super drive which is apple's version of like a you know cd dvd burner but it has one empty slot um this is also was the only power mac g4 that had the ability to add an airport extreme card so back in the day airport was um the 802.11b standard that apple you know they called it airport um and it used to be a, a, a card you could buy for any computer you could buy it for your ibook for your power book whatever and it came and it started coming in some of the computers well Again, January 2003, they released this, and instead of optionally being able to add an airport card, 802.11b or 12 megabit speeds, you could buy an airport extreme card, which is 802.11g, 54 megabits. So you could actually add 802.11g here, which is really nice because it means most of the routers today will still work with it, as opposed to 802.11b, where you have to set up a separate SSID. Uh, also, it has a card here where you add Bluetooth, which is nice. So Bluetooth and airport, or build to order or CTO, configure to order options. Um, it came with a Radeon 9000 Pro video card with ADC and DVI. It came with, well, you can configure it up to two gigabytes of RAM with three 512 megabyte sticks, 2700 megahertz um, DDR1 uh, memory chips. The, um, the Also the cool thing about this is if you got the dual 1.42 gigahertz model, it came with a copper heat sink versus the aluminum or steel, whatever it was before. And the copper heat sink was just because Apple realized that this thing runs freaking hot, let's use copper. Um, and of course, one of the things I've done already is I've already ordered thermal paste because I need to remove this and uh, reapply thermal paste. With There's some screws here on the edges. You've got to remove this heat sink and reapply because uh, it, it does get really hot. The thermal paste basically cooks itself off after a few years, which could have been why they threw it out. It might be overheating. It might not be running reliably. So they just said, ah, screw it, let's get rid of it and uh, reapplying thermal paste could actually save this thing from overheating. You'll notice too, the way Apple did these boards is this is the logic board here. Most people call them motherboards, this is the logic board. But the G4 actually sat on a daughter board right here. So you can see there's actually a daughter board that connects right there. And the G4 dual chip setup sits on the secondary daughter board that you can just take up. So if the, and they're soldered in there, so if the G4 chips fail, you've got to purchase the whole 1.42 gigahertz daughter board um, and then you reattach your heatsink. Uh, sits super close to the RAM, and then right here you've got your AGP slot, 4X I think, and then your PCI slots. Um, and then over here you've got dual drives, two ATA66 IDE drives, 180 gigabytes each. So they're, they're hanging out here, there's two of them there. Then you've got your dual optical drive set up and then your Apple proprietary PSU right there. And a small little microphone right there. Uh, so what I've done is I have, uh, this thing is so cool. I'm so excited. So I, what I've wanted for a while now is I've actually wanted a computer that can live down here in the basement right here. And so I can uh, play some tunes on it, uh, do some research. If I need to Google something, if I, <laughs> if I need to bring up on my computer, Toratex install um, uh, documents because Toratex doesn't include paper installation in their packaging. You have to go to their website to, to pull up the web, to pull up the instructions. I want to have a computer down here for general research, 
looking for torque specs and uh, uh, looking at instructions or ordering a part I need to without having to grab my iPad. Um, so in the iPad, I don't want to get covered in oil. So I don't like using the iPad or the phone down here. I kind of like what you use in that I can co get covered in oil. It's not a big deal. So this thing's going to be my office computer, my, my workshop garage computer, uh, as long as it lasts. So it came with OS, Mac OS 10.3.9. Um, I have no intention on running Mac OS 9. I just, I'm just not feeling nostalgic. This would be, a lot of people covet this computer that are Mac geeks because this is the Mac that you can, it's the fastest Mac ever released that runs Mac OS 9. So if you are a Mac OS 9 lover and you wanna play like Bungie and Unreal uh, Tournament and Quake uh, and Doom and a bunch of other games for classic Mac OS, this is the ultimate computer to get because it is the fastest CPU, the fastest RAM, uh, 25, 2700 megahertz versus 2300 megahertz RAM. Um, and you've got support for a Radeon 9800 Pro card in here. Um, there's a couple of their GeForce cards that fit in here too. But, and you, there are also now SSD conversions where you can actually do bootable SSDs with this thing. You can do a PCIe SSD um, with NVM uh, SSD NAND chips. And so you can boot OS 9 in like one second and you can be playing um, um, Marathon from Bungie like in two seconds later. And it's insanely fast and you could do ultra settings. I mean, it's a, it's a beast for that kind of thing. I have no intention of doing that. In fact, I might even install Ubuntu on this thing because Ubuntu still runs a PowerPC G4 um, group that keeps the latest version of Ubuntu running on PowerPC G4, which is really exciting. I said, I think you can run the latest version like of Ubuntu 19 on this thing without any problems. Uh, which will mean I can run a modern web browser. Uh, so that's nice. If I want to watch a YouTube video to figure out how to do something, I can actually watch YouTube videos because these notoriously don't do well playing YouTube videos. Um, and it's not because the computer is slow. It's just the world of compressed internet videos have, 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 are optimized for new OSs and new GPUs and new chips. And so when you, even if this was a supercomputer and could, and, and then this computer was used to like edit movies and like Hollywood movies were made on this. Some of your favorite albums in the early 2000s were made on this production wise and mastering. It's just not fast enough for YouTube because of the way that the internet is kind of left behind these older chips. That's all it is. Um, so Ubuntu though would allow me to watch some YouTube videos. So I think I might do that, but either way, here's what I've ordered for because I'm an insane person, but I confirmed it does work. Uh, so it works, which is exciting. In fact, the, the previous owner never said a password, so I booted it up and I'm like, oh shit, those are someone's documents. So I, I did a system hardware test and that shut it down. Um, so what I've done is I've ordered uh, an extra 512 megabyte stick of RAM for two gigs total, because these three sticks tested fine. I also ordered a, um, a Radeon 9800 Pro card, which was like 20 bucks. Um, I also ordered a, um, a brand new super drive, which this only writes at like 4X, this will write at 24X, so it'll be a second drive. So not only can I finally um, do disk copies at home again without, because all my computers don't have disk drives. I can finally do disk copies, which is nice um, for people, but I also will have a faster super drive. I also bought a, this will hold four, three and a half inch hard drives. I bought a 500 gig um, SSD um, for the Mac Pro G4. It, it converts to the IDE cable. It sits in the three and a half inch bay, but it's a 500 gig um, SSD. I also bought for like four bucks each, the Bluetooth and the airport cards. And I also bought a new PRAM battery right there. What else did I buy? Oh, um, also a power cable, a 10 foot power cable to go from here to over there. And then finally I bought for like $30 a supposedly working 20 inch cinema display from Apple. It's an acrylic, it's a beautiful acrylic display. And um, I'm really excited about that. I wanted to buy, <laughs> again, this is like reliving my childhood. That thing was two grand or $2,500, that 20 inch cinema display. And it, and it powered, it was powered by the ADC port, which is really awesome. So it's just one port from here to that display and it would run it. Um, 1680 by 1050, I think, or maybe it was 1280 by, anyway. There's a bigger one. There's an Apple Cinema Display HD, which is 23 inches uh, diagonally. Uh, looks the same, but it's much bigger. And that thing ran like $3,400. And the only one on eBay that's actually working and, and working with like, you know, no, no damage to the case, no broken stand and that stuff, no, you know, rewiring. 
is like 500 bucks. There's a couple in there for $150 that are like works, but with some scratches, with some dead spots, those kind of things. The stand's broken, needs a, a you know, you know be leaned against a wall. I want a really nice one and I'll keep on the lookout for one, but for now the 20 inches is what I'm gonna use. It would be nice to run the $3,000 computer and $3,400 uh, display, like I can relive my childhood. <laughs> but unfortunately, um, those 23 inch HD displays are just not around anymore in good working order. Um, and that kind of, you know, in closing, you know, when people say, wow, Apple's charging six grand for a, a Mac Pro tower and six grand for a, a Pro Display XDR. Yeah, but that might feel like a lot of money, but that's not a lot of money for Apple. Like this is a 2003 machine that was like three grand. And you know, that's just how it used to be with Apple and that's how it is now. So shut it. <laughs> um, so I got this for free and I've invested about $150 into it. Oh, and then also I bought the Apple Pro keyboard and mouse, which are black, uh, black mouse and black keyboard. Uh, again, back from this era. So I've invested uh, under under $200, um, but I'll have the display and it'll have maxed out RAM, maxed out storage, maxed out uh, GPU. It'll have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, even though I do have ethernet, I can run ethernet from the server room over here. I probably will, but either way, I have all the stuff that I need, a beautiful 20 inch display from Apple, and it'll be, uh, and also I had to order the OS 10.5 Leopard um, install DVD. Um, to reinstall the OS because um, you can't download the OS from the internet. So I'll have to um, do that. But anyway, and this thing is gorgeous. It's in great shape. Um, the guy who used to own it, I have his name because it was his login name. <laughs> um, you know, I, he threw it out because it was old. I get it. But this thing was in perfect working condition. Never been dropped, no marring, no broken plastics. Uh, man, I am so freaking excited to have an Apple Power Mac G4 dual 1.42 machine in my possession. And here's the spec, by the way, you have to turn your head sideways. This is the spec they actually originally ordered it with. They ordered it with 1.5 gigs of RAM and the dual, uh, the dual 180 gigabyte drives and the super drive. The only thing they didn't actually do so they, 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 they added all these things. They added the 1.42, they added the hard drives, they added the RAM. The only thing they didn't do is add the best GPU. They stuck with the stock Radeon 9000 Pro and didn't go for the Radeon 9800 Pro. That's it. Everything else is in like exceptional shape. I'm so excited. Oh, and look, you know, you see the similarities of the cheese graterness of the new uh, Mac Pro uh, that's out now. It's pretty cool how similar those are. And as far as design cues go with a, almost a 20 year gap between designs. 